Ah, beer pong. The beautiful game. It's as American as apple pie. Baseball. Shock and awe. Which brings us to Ronald Reagan. 1980s debates over his foreign policy in the Middle East gave the game its nickname, Beirut. So basically, the Gibber gave us beer pong. Thanks, Mr. President. There you go again. Not quite. Reagan is just a small part of Beer Pong's story. So let's go back to the beginning. To the 50s, Hanover, New Hampshire, Dartmouth College. In a fraternity basement, waspy undergrads were playing ping pong and drinking beer. Chip Mayflower served. Todd Todsworth put his beer on the table to return. And then fate struck. Or, uh, splashed. Whatever. Soon these pioneers decided the game was more fun by aiming directly at the cups. Dartmouth Pong was born. They snapped off their paddle handles for better arc shots. Ping pong tables became 8x5 sheets of war painted plywood, nets, 2x4s, or broomsticks. Plus, more cups. Clear, plastic, filled with two gulps of the cheap stuff. Game on. Each Dartmouth fraternity quickly developed its own version of this 2 on 2 game. Different names, same goal. Hit balls at cups. Hit the outside, they drink a swig. Land it, that's a sink. They drink it all. If all your cups are gone, so are you. By the early 70s, Dartmouth had a hotly contested intramural beer pong league. Students wrote the New York Times, demanding to know just who exactly held the world record for longest pong match. By the late 70s, it went viral. Road tripping students from other schools had carried the gospel across New England, to Bowdoin in Maine, Williams in western Massachusetts. Dartmouth pong traveled intact to Ivy League rivals at Penn and Princeton, into central Pennsylvania, to Bucknell and Lehigh. At first, they played Dartmouth's game. The words beer pong even made Lehigh's school paper in 1979. But change was coming, and its name was Ronald Reagan. Nope, still not there. But we are in the early 80s when a Lehigh fraternity brother wandered over to Bucknell and saw them playing pong without paddles. Or maybe it was the other way around. Drinking and meticulous record keeping don't really mix. Bucknell and Lehigh couldn't quite agree who threw the first ball. Still can't. But everyone agreed this new game needed a name. And now, The Gipper. In the early 80s, responding to a series of brutal terrorist attacks and kidnappings in the Middle East and Europe, President Reagan bombed Libya, one of the alleged culprits. The public demanded the same punishment for Beirut, Lebanon's capital, where much of the violence had occurred. Bomb Beirut! The headlines screamed it, inspiring students back in the Keystone State. What were ping pong balls if not little bombs? And didn't their game get its players bombed? As the game spread locally, it was known briefly as Libya, then Beirut. Whatever you called it, Armouth Pong got benched. By the late 80s, Beirut had burst out of Pennsylvania to the Midwest, Gulf Coast, all the way to the Pacific, places where no one had heard of Dartmouth Pong. Distinguishing between the two wasn't necessary. Outside the Northeast, Beirut got dropped. Most people think of the throw game when they hear the word beer pong. You just need some basics. A table, a stack of red solo cups, a bunch of ping pong balls, and plenty of beer. Four people, two on each side. Racks of six or ten. Water cups, one for each team, placed right above your rack to clean balls of floor grime. You are now ready to party. Let's talk technique. Most shooters throw a lob, arcing the ball into the cup at a forgiving angle. Others fling the ball shallow and hard. The laser. There's the bounce, an ambitious approach that's worth two cups if sunk, but subject to vicious defense by the team under fire. Most game variations allow a re-rack to consolidate cups into easier to sink formations. Beyond that, who knows? House rules are usually just a random assortment of bylaws inherited from an older sibling or an upperclassman. If shooters on a team make cups in the same turn, they go again. Then, there are rebuttals. If your last cup has been sunk, you're about to be eliminated. Take a last gasp to shoot till you miss. Some play guy's finger, girl's blow. Defensive moves that are as hard to pull off as they are embarrassing to say. Distractions take many forms. Nudity is popular. Wild motions, funny faces. It's all gravy, baby. Beer pong has come a long way from its early days with Chip and Todd. Jimmy Fallon has played live on late night TV. Obama's daughter allegedly played on a recent college visit, but it doesn't stop there. Beer pong tournaments swept the nation in the aughts. The granddaddy of all such showdowns is the World Series of Beer Pong, hosted in Las Vegas by beerpong.com. So next time you rack them up, Thank Chip and Todd. Thank the Gipper. Thank Dartmouth and Lehigh and Bucknell. College kids everywhere. Thank the party gods for giving us a game as American as apple pie and a hell of a story to go with it. Class dismissed. Hey, 
Hey guys, if you like what you just saw, be sure to check out some more Thrillist videos, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah.